Most of the data visualizations fail because there are too many options of charts or because the charts are too cluttered. Here, we propose an approach to give momentum to your data visualization journey by creating visuals that people remember and understand. In this video, we suggest a new experimentation approach to solve this. Hey, my name is Bernardo and I'm a lead data scientist here at GrowthTrack. If you are a member of our learning community and follow our content, you already know very well that one of our main beliefs is that experimentation and a healthy peer review fastens the crafting of a business solution and reduces costly mistakes. Especially in the case of explanatory data analysis, we use a framework that helps people start iterating their data visualization process with the audience acceptance as the final goal. We say that the audience accepts the visual when there's engagement and the insight is easy to understand and remember. Let's take a look at the prerequisites, what you should know first before start prototyping your visuals. This might sound cheesy, but you actually need to understand your audience. I know it sounds obvious, but it's good to have this as a clear notion from the start. It's actually one of the principles of design thinking. We will then, as the next step, identify the action that you would like the audience to take after seeing your visual or watching your entire presentation. For example, this could be the approval of a training budget request. You want them to understand how close the current sales amount is compared to a quarterly target or you want them to choose a new landing page to deploy it based on the results of an A-B test. These prerequisites also help you to identify which are your key charts and visuals. These are usually related to a key business question or a performance indicator, and next to that, you will then be able to identify the insight. The insight is the key message to be communicated and explained with the visuals. For instance, that a training had a positive impact on motivation and productivity, or that the current sales amount has already achieved its quarterly target, or even that the new tested landing page converts more than the one currently in use by the company. The last one of the prerequisites is to have agreed on the method. This is basically the form of the visualization, how the audience will see the message as an end result. The typical examples here are slide decks that are combined with an oral presentation, for example, a static or interactive dashboard or chart, or even a written report. Now that you have a clear idea of your prerequisites, let's take a look at the possible charts to prototype. Instead of trying to find the most suitable type among hundreds of options, try to experiment with these three efficient types of explanatory visual. We like to call them the minimalist charts because they are simple and efficient. The first of them is the bar chart. Very easy to visualize group differences in levels, for example. Then we have the line chart, which makes it easy to visualize evolutions over time or to draw summarized relationships. The third one is the band. Simple, intuitive, and easy to memorize. It's called band, big as number, because it presents the single number and tries to make it salient. Why do we suggest you to start with only these three types? Well, the majority of business questions and performance indicators, they involve some kind of group comparison, a relationship or a single value against a threshold. And with these three charts, you can experiment and later on, increase the complexity of the visual if necessary. In summary, they are simple, easy to declutter, and help you to accentuate the attractiveness of a desired message. They are also very suitable for monochromatic palettes, so color can be used as an accent to draw the attention of the audience to the main message. Our next step is then to start prototyping to achieve the effective visual. The first good practice that you want to implement here is to highlight the insight. Make use of visual cues to drive the attention of the audience to where you want them to pay attention. For example, point to the part of the visual where the main insight is 
or even add some salient clue next to it. Second, explain with text. Add informative labels and captions. The idea here is to make the visuals as accessible as possible. For example, even a person who never did data analysis could get a takeaway message from the visual. Also, reduce clutter. Don't add things simply because you have empty spaces. For example, remove all the unnecessary grid lines, borders and axis labels that are secondary. Preserve empty spaces to help the audience to find where the main information is. And most importantly for your success, embrace peer review. This is the most efficient way to achieve audience acceptance. Assume you'll never be able to spot all those costly mistakes that end up being seen by the audience. Profit from the fact that data visualization is actually one of the most empathetic ways to build a collaborative culture within a team. Use the steps to iterate between the idea and the tests to get a successful visual to present to the audience. This is actually your desired final outcome. We have compiled all these steps for you in the latest version of our data visualization guide, which you have been using in our own practice and training. You can download the guide by clicking the link in the description below. There, you will see we have compiled some inspirational examples, top data visualization voices you should follow to feel inspired as well. Also check these top voices own visualization guides. They have books and a lot of online content that will boost your inspiration as well. These are awesome extended sources for improvement once you get out of inertia in your chart development process with the iterative method that we just showed you here. For example, Storytelling with Datablog has many favorite before and after comparisons in which they start from a clean template and then go through the iterations. I've added the links in the description for you. Check them out later. Finally, we always like to have a small challenge to actually check your understanding of the process. At the end of the data visualization guide, you will find an exercise that asks you to build your effective chart with a simple but real data set. Let us know how helpful this sounds to you and keep in touch for more tips and frameworks on how to elevate your way of working. I'll see you next time.